Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, the flooding that we saw across parts of Nebraska and South Dakota over the weekend was truly historic. We had been discussing in our weather videos about the snowpack we've been seeing here in the central part of the United States in the Northern Plains and the Great Lakes states. We talked about how we had anywhere between one and maybe in some locations over 10 inches of liquid equivalent, which means if you melt all that snow, it is gonna be like giving a 10 inch rainfall. Remember the soils underneath this snow are frozen. Well, I don't think even looking at these maps last week and even talking about that huge low pressure system could actually have prepared me to see the kind of epic and historical flooding we saw in Nebraska and South, uh, South Dakota uh, this past couple of days here. We, this was the setup. And this was the system we went through last week. This is the last seven days total accumulated precipitation. And when you look at how much rain fell from the sky in parts of Nebraska and southeastern South Dakota, some locations saw anywhere between one and four inches of rainfall. Now, if you add the two together, the snow melt, because of all that warm air that came out ahead of this system, so the snow melt plus the rainfall. It was the equivalent of adding anywhere between five and seven inches of liquid to the soil almost across the entire state of Nebraska. And that's really the, really the southern two thirds uh, here of South Dakota. When you put all that together and put all that into rivers that still have ice in them, we had ice jams, we had just an incredible amount of flooding and you saw the videos. And it wasn't just confined to that region in the Central Plains. Those strong thunderstorms that went over parts of the lower and mid Mississippi River Valley and parts of the Ohio River Valley continued the flooding there. When we put it all together, this is what our current uh, map from the USGS shows in terms of the river gauges that are near or above flood stage. And as we've been discussing, our major severe uh, threat this spring in terms of farming is coming from flooding rains. And right now it's going to take a while to continue to drain this water away. And it's going to go down here into the lower Mississippi River Valley, which is already flooded. And don't forget, we still have a lot of snow on the ground here that has to melt. And it will be melting by this weekend in this area. So our flood threat is nowhere near over at this point. Just to show you what some of the river gauges look like here in, in, in uh, parts of, of Nebraska, uh, part of the Platte River, some stations in the Missouri River are actually setting new all-time flood stages out of the flooding we've just seen. It has truly been historic. Now, you've probably seen a lot of videos. You've seen some, some just crazy scenes going on in parts of Nebraska, but I'm going to show you this from a satellite perspective. What you're going to watch over here is from a satellite called Copernicus. And you're about to see here the difference between when the river's normal and in flood stage. Just incredible to see that. And here again is another video from Nebraska. We're just going to play this one once. That's what the flood stage currently looks like. Again, this is historic flooding, and we wish it would be done quickly. Now, meanwhile, while this was going on, a quick hitting system came through parts of Iowa and Illinois while the big system kind of exited at the end of last week, bringing in some lake effect snow. Other than some widely scattered showers and storms here for the southeast, much of the action over the last couple of days has been right here uh, in this part of Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana, and then a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity kind of stretching down here in the Gulf. Thankfully, things were relatively dry across the central part of the United States. But even though we're going to see a bit of a drier pattern moving forward, things are going to get going again around the 25th and 26th of this month. So we're not done with this by any stretch of the imagination. But this was kind of interesting here. You see the snow that kind of came in through here uh, over the weekend? Well, watch this. This is a satellite animation. I want you to keep your attention right here on the snow swath. As the clouds cleared out on Sunday, the high March sun angles took that one to two to some locations up to four inches of snow and just melted it away. Isn't that neat to see? I always think this is fascinating to see what uh, we can get from our high res resolution satellite imagery. Okay, with that, let's though get right on into the forecast. We're gonna take a look at our high resolution NAM model first. And let's go ahead and click play and see the major things we're gonna be watching here. To begin the day on Monday, we're gonna be watching parts of North Dakota and parts of Minnesota. You can see some precip sliding through there. We can also see the stronger uh, showers and thunderstorms moving through the Gulf over toward parts of Florida. 
But again, we're going to be watching right here in the middle part of the country for some lighter precipitation moving through parts of Nebraska and parts of Kansas. Now, this is getting through the, uh, you know, the, the overnight hours on Monday, spreading in through this area such that by early Tuesday morning, the lighter showers are still lingering in parts of Nebraska where we just saw that flooding. Then they'll be moving throughout the day into Iowa, Missouri, trailing a front through parts of Kansas back over to the Panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. This will be moving in the overnight hours on Tuesday into Wednesday morning into Missouri and Illinois. And that's the only major system we're going to be dealing with at the beginning of this week in the middle part of the country. Meanwhile, we do see some snow that's moving through parts of Michigan here. And our next big coastal load did come on shore here out in California on Tuesday. And that system out there is going to kind of well, it's going to give us the major setup pattern we're going to be seeing here for the next 10 to 15 days. I'll talk about that more in just a few seconds. But how much rain are we talking about? Well, let's look here at our high resolution NAM model. We can see that thankfully South Dakota is going to miss out on this. But when you come down here into parts of Nebraska, we will be seeing anywhere between a quarter and three quarters inch rainfall with heavier amounts really getting into parts of south, far southeastern Nebraska, spreading through parts of northern Missouri and parts of eastern Kansas. And again, the front kind of trails back into this area. Outside of that, it's a relatively dry first few days of the week for much of the country. Uh, but we need to be paying attention to what's coming out of California here in a few minutes. So let's now step out to our high resolution European model and watch this over the next 10 days. I'm going to get us all the way to, to Wednesday morning, which is where our previous analysis took us. Now you can see on Tuesday into Wednesday, our next coastal low hits California and spreads snow through higher elevations out west. And this is going to be valley rain. Now, as this system kind of moves out by Friday, into the central plains. We have a high pressure dominating the south, the mid-south and the southeast, and that's gonna pump some moisture right up through Texas into Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. Now, unfortunately, that brings in some rain toward the end of this week on Friday into early Saturday into this area. And that's just going to be round one. Meanwhile, much of the eastern part of the country stays relatively dry. And this is a region here in the mid-south that has been very, very wet. But you will see another system coming onto California. It kind of came through there. It's now sitting in the Intermountain West, such that by Monday the 25th, the latest model runs from Sunday are trying to take this system and do something with it here in the Central Plains. Now, my major concern about this system is twofold. It's going to be bringing rain to regions that are already flooding, and we could be seeing right here from Texas over into the lower Mississippi River Valley and then points east of there seeing another severe weather outbreak out of this system as we progress into early next week. Now, we're pretty far out in the forecast. We don't have this nailed down perfectly. But when we put it all together, we're looking at rainfall amounts at least through next Monday morning. As the next two systems come out in the Central Plains, we are looking in this area at locations picking up between three quarters and an inch and a half, maybe two inches of rainfall. Again, this is looking out pretty far here, but this region of the country over the next eight days continues to stay on that drier trend. Okay, so we're, the big concern is going to be the continual flooding threat in this part of the country here. While the flooding threat we've been seeing over here in the Mid-South looks to get some reprieve at least in the next eight days. Meanwhile, California, again, you're the main focal point for each one of these systems as they come on shore. Now, just to show the confidence in that system that's going to be coming out here on the 25th, I want you to just see the European Ensemble averaging all 51 members. They're picking up on a pretty good uh, bias here towards seeing a low pressure system somewhere in the Arklatex region moving across the Mid-South. And what that's going to do again is increase our severe weather threat in this area. But we're talking about next week. So I'm looking out pretty far here. This is not set in stone. It's just the next major system that we're going to be looking at. Now, what's getting all of this going? Well, I want you to see something here. What you're looking at here is starting off on Monday, the trough ridge pattern looking straight down to the North Pole. So the North Pole's right underneath where I'm circling there. The main feature for the next several days is going to be the position and strength of this ridge. Now, why that's important is because that ridge, as it dominates Western Canada, is going to kind of daisy chain several troughs that are going to kind of orbit around that ridge. Now, that takes the storm track right here into California. Like I said, California is going to be the target for the next several systems. 
In the meantime, flow out of that ridge into the southeast here does two things. We get upper level convergence over the mid-south and eastern corn belt. That's a drier pattern. But we will be bringing in cooler weather for the next several days, but rebounding temperatures as this ridge moves. Okay, that was a lot of discussion. Let's now watch what happens here. As I click play, you see the ridge dominates through middle of this week. Meanwhile, a trough extending from Greenland all the way down here to the southeast is going to keep the southeast cooler than average. But as that ridge spreads, we're going to see rebounding temperatures throughout the week for much of the eastern part of the country. Now, again, you see how each one of these troughs is lined up and they hit California first. They eject into the central plains. And the ones we're watching here, this is the one that's coming through over the weekend. Here's the big one that comes out on the 25th. So this is the pattern that I'm worried about. Warm air spreading out ahead of this, but that one's going to initiate a pretty powerful low pressure system if it materializes as we currently think that sweeps across the southern states into the mid-south and eventually over to the east coast. As we progress beyond this, getting out toward the very end of March, there's a couple of interesting features to see. Again, we see the systems kind of lined up here in the west coast, but there is almost split flow out west with the ridge that's building up here with the subtropical jet coming in underneath it. This just tells me that this area of the country is going to probably continue to stay active with weather as we progress into the month of April. Okay, what does this do in terms of temperatures? Well, let's watch every six hours and see the rebounding temperatures in the east. Getting you through the middle part of the week, we got a cool bias there while the Pacific Northwest is warm. But watch what happens as I get toward the end of the week. Those cooler biases, well, they're only a couple of degrees cooler than average, such that by the weekend, we start to see warmth really coming across much of the eastern part of the Corn Belt, eastern part of the United States. This is now Monday into Tuesday of next week. But you can see it right here. See the cooler anomalies here and the warmer conditions there? This is where by early next week, we're watching that low pressure center crank up. So it certainly brings the warm air in this area and the cooler air that will be coming in behind it. That's just a classic setup of one of these low pressure systems. And watch, by next week, the cooler air tries to slide in behind that low. But with our unblocked flow, overall, this kind of just means that we keep transitioning back and forth. So unlike a year ago, we're not locked into this bitterly cold pattern. Rebounding temperatures throughout much of this week for the eastern part of the country. And we're going to be watching for some really warm conditions in the northwest where snow melt is going to cause flooding. Taking a quick look at South America, we know that the safrina crop is in early. And even though you see a bit of a dry bias right into this area, overall, this is still going to be getting plenty of precipitation. It had been dry over in this section of Brazil, but their forecast to be wet over the next 15 days. We do see a dry bias in Argentina. But remember, going into this, as I explained in last week's video, we're in surplus of precipitation. So the dry bias is not coming in hot. It's actually coming in cool, which means this is going to be favorable for crops growing down in South uh, in, in Argentina. And one last place to take you to, I want to tell you about uh, Tropical Cyclone Trevor. So Tropical Tri Cyclone Trevor here on the map on the right is currently sitting in this region just north of Queensland. It's going to be cutting right in through here and bringing in with it quite a bit of precipitation over the next 10 days or so. That's why you see much of this region carrying a wet anomaly. We also see that extending over into some very productive farmland in this particular section of Australia. So this tropical system is kind of uh, bringing in some precipitation here to the uh, eastern parts of Australia. I wanted to give you that global update, though, as we wrap up this forecast video. So with that, I'll go ahead and stop it right there. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions hope you look forward to our next Ag Forecast coming out this week. In the meantime, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.